This is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream podcast. And first, I just want to say I got really exciting news yesterday, and it definitely involves you, my listeners and my viewers. So thank you so much for believing in the show. I've been on air for over 12 years, massively syndicated. And I got news last night that this show, I knew previously that I was nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. What I found out last night is that Dare to Dream is a finalist. This is a big deal. I don't need to name names, think names of the biggest podcast that you know of. And that's who I'm up against. So I am in the entertainment category because if you know anything about various awards, they always have really interesting names for categories that don't generally stick. So uh, it's okay. I think this show is massively entertaining and educational and frankly a masterclass because of who I have on. So I just wanted to thank you because any award that comes my way is completely an award for you guys too. The show, it's symbiotic, right? I have to have you in order for this show to survive. Thank you always. And by the way, way beyond surviving, thriving, you know, just really being my joy spot every week. And thank you for writing in, letting me know the things you think about when you hear people. I love reading what you have to say. I love seeing what gets illuminated inside of you and the things you start doing by virtue of listening and watching. So keep writing, know that I see everything and know it's so encouraging and meaningful. So that said, also I wanna give a really big shout out to Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring this show. Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com and Access Consciousness. They do energy healing work all around the world. So any country you're in, you can look them up. They've got products online, they've got classes that introduce you, and then they've got in-person classes. This is stuff that gets taken care of and healed in the moment, love it. My question to you is what if you could overcome the obstacles that prevent you from living a fulfilled life? Well, my guest today is Anil Gupta. He is a world expert on relationships and happiness. Anil has coached some of the most famous celebrities like Mike Tyson, top athletes, CEOs, and he's been a guest speaker with Richard Branson on Necker Island. Emil enjoys helping people overcome obstacles that prevent them from living a fulfilled life. Emil has appeared on stages all over the world, and recently he was a keynote speaker in Medellin in front of 10,000 raving fans. He's appeared at Harvard on a number of occasions and is a guest speaker on Fox News, as well as the best-selling international author of Immediate Happiness, along with other published articles. Anil Gupta is here today to talk about how we can have a dramatic and positive impact on our lives. If you want to know more about him, go to immediatehappiness.com. Anil, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. No, thank you for inviting me. It's taken so long to get to you, but we, we were immediately uh, connected. Totally. I want to start with your shirt. And um, I may have to post a picture here a little bit later of the two of us, and you are wearing that shirt, this beautiful black shirt with this big red heart. You may have to pick your heart up a little bit for us to see all of it. There you go. Boom, 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 boom. What's the story? Why that shirt? Why is that your branding and marketing? Well, uh, I used to leave the house, and as I was leaving the house, my wife would say, are you really going out like that? I had no dress sense. So I said, I guess not. So then she would come back with me and she would dress me. And I thought, I can't be doing this. I'm a grown man, sort of. <laughs> so I thought, you know, what's the easiest thing to do here? So, well, well, I'll just wear black, you know, then there can be no arguments. And I thought, okay, that's fine. That's a little bit boring. You know, what could I do to make, make me stand out? Or, you know, what do I stand for? I stand for love. What's the symbol of love? Heart. Great. So I thought, I'll put a heart shape on my left shoulder. You know, the, the saying is, you know, you wear your heart on your shoulder. And I thought, wow, well, you know, what would be better than that? So I thought, why not put it here to symbolize love? And I thought, well, it's going to look funny. And I thought, well, and then if you don't try, you don't get. Mm -hmm. So I printed some shirts and they looked amazing. So that's uh, for the last four or five years, that's all I've been wearing. I must tell people I don't have just one shirt. I have a hundred <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, I, I do change them. This is version four. And I'm sure whomever it is you're paying for the long sleeve version, the short sleeve version, I hope you have stock in the company. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing uh -huh. well. I, I make, make them up, but I, I have a world exclusive for you. Yeah, please. Yes, love it. So my wife and I were here in Phuket. Uh, it's 5 a.m. in the morning here. And we passed a tattoo shop. She said, oh, I'd love to have a tattoo. My wife has never, ever said anything like that. She, and she said, well, and I said, if you're going to have one, I'll have one. So I had a tattoo done. No one has ever seen this. So this is the first time okay. I'll show it to you. Can you see it? Oh, I love it. It's perfect. So if, if you forget to wear your black shirt, you still have your heart on your sleeve. You're, uh. you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Did it hurt? It did. But um, you know what? Uh, as I was, I was uh, doing the uh, tattoo, the guy said, no, no, no pain, no gain. I thought, fair enough. Touche. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that exclusive with us. It's very you interesting you would have done that because at 16 years old, this is pre-tattoos, by the way. The only people who had tattoos back then were sailors or truck drivers. And at 16 years old, I desperately wanted to get a red heart. Exactly what you got. Oh, really? Yes, precisely. And my friends took me out and did a whole religious number on me. You know, <laughs> they bastardized the Jewish religion and said, if you do that, it says, if you mark your arm, you have to cut off your arm. Of course, that's nothing what the Bible really meant, but they really like made me straighten up and fly right. So it took me decades later for me to do something. And um, who knows, I still may do that. I may get a matching one but I went ahead and did this at some point. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're actually 3D butterflies because um, I wanted to get something to represent my highest value, which was freedom. That's so beautiful. And yeah. that, you know, that's, that's a, a, what really people are seeking. They, but what they, look, what they are uh, searching for is financial freedom. But freedom is way beyond financial freedom because with freedom, you have financial freedom, but with financial freedom, you don't have freedom necessarily yes i agree a hundred percent very interesting um i'm interviewing ken honda coming up uh Jap japan zen millionaire and this is something he makes very clear yeah. one thing doesn't necessarily equate to the other and it's really important to understand what are your values first and what does freedom mean to you? Not everybody has a value for freedom, but I think for someone like me who loves to travel and has a bit of a free spirit, uh, doesn't like to be confined or suffocated, needs a lot of space. Um, and, you know, people who don't give me a hard time, frankly, just say, yeah, it's great. Go do that. Go do that. It, it works really well for my life. And that's a huge value. To have the money to assist to be able to do that is also very helpful. It, it is, and there's a there's a fine line, and there is a formula I, I've developed for fulfillment, stroke freedom, which I'd love to share with the audience, and they can immediately apply that in their lives. Brilliant! Yes, I'm all ears and all pen. Okay, so the uh, freedom, stroke, fulfillment equals g cubed, g times g times g, and the first g is you have to give. Give your time. Your energy your love, your commitment, your joy, your gift, your money. Basically give you away without and wanting anything in return. So you'll, you'll see a lot of people who are so-called givers, but they're not really givers because they want something in return. Mm -hmm. And then they get, uh, um, what's the word? Um, Burnt resentful. out, mm. yeah, resentful, burnt out, angry, frustrated. When they say, "Well, I keep on giving, I keep on giving, but I don't get, you know, I uh, I don't get anything back." Well, that's your problem. So, if you want to give, give freely without wanting anything back. And in that moment, you surrender to that, you get something back. Beautiful. So, give freely with surrender. 
give of your time, give of your energy, of your love, of your commitment, of your joy, of your gift, of your money, give you away. Yeah, because when, 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 if you don't give yourself away, the ego comes in and that's where all the pain starts. Mm. The second G, uh -huh. you have to be grateful for what you have and don't focus on what you don't have. So people are often thinking, oh, the, someone else has got a better house, a better car, a better, better financial system or sit, uh, situation, blah, blah, blah. But they forget what they have. And if you always compare, it'll always be painful. Even if you're a billionaire, I've coached billionaires, and some of them are uh, a little bit resentful. They think, oh, the other person has more money. He's, he's a lot happier, but that's not always the case. Uh, the, 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 the joy doesn't come from how much you have. It's through this formula, uh, giving and gratitude, being grateful for what you have. So here's a really simple exercise that I can, you can share with all your readers, uh, listeners, is if you just look at your hands mm -hmm. right now, if you look at them, when was the last time you thanked them? Aw, that makes you know, me sad. Like, I don't know. I thank yeah. my body yesterday a lot. I do appreciate how amazing and healthy and strong it is, but to, you know, break it down like this, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. You wouldn't be able to show off your beautiful rings. Mm. You wouldn't be able to uh, operate the machinery to get this podcast going. You wouldn't be able to caress the people that you love. So, you know, these are the things that are the valuable things in life. Wow, that's beautiful, powerful. So to be grateful is the second step. Grateful for what you have without putting attention on what it is we perceive we don't have, but to see what actually is and have gratitude for that. Yeah. And the third G is you have to grow mm. emotionally, physically. But not bigger necessarily. <laughs> yeah. I have to learn that one. Uh, <laughs> spiritually and mentally. Mm. I think that one would be challenging for a lot of people. The, the biggest one is emotional, uh, uh, the emotional one. You know, because it's uh, something that they haven't been taught how to handle themselves as human beings. We were never given a manual. And that, that's their problem. Uh, they, they have to learn from their parents. And if their parents are dysfunctional and their parents come from dysfunctional families, there's a lot of pain and, and uh, tools that they haven't been able to uh, gain from their parents. So they, they often uh, bring down a lot of pain and frustration and resentment, uh, which isn't conducive to a, a beautiful life. Mm. So, so the next is uh, to grow emotionally, um, physically, maybe health wise or exercise wise, spiritually and mentally. So that means to be quite open because life comes to us all the time, whether we like it or not, change is always present. And in order to be masterful at that, and in order to have the life of our dreams, this one is so essential, right? We, we must have the fluidity within us to, to also go back to number two, be grateful for all we have and be and do that's really working and clicking. And those pieces that are coming up begging to be healed, May, may not be so pretty sometimes, but to be okay to take that on as part of this journey. Yeah, and you know, the biggest issue most people have is forgiveness. Mm, yeah. It, uh, people think that forgiving someone is letting the other person win, but it's nothing to do with them. It's about giving you the freedom. And I call forgiveness the express pathway to freedom. Say that again, the expressed? Uh, forgiveness is the express pathway to freedom. Ooh, the express, like being on the express, driving quickly, pathway yeah. to freedom. Holy moly. Yeah. Explain more, please. So the quality of your life is dependent on the depth and authenticity of, of the forgiveness you extend to yourself and to others. So when you forgive, you get a sudden download of joy and a release of 
a big burden, a release of pain in the shoulders, in the body, um, and it's a freeing moment. So that's the fastest way to get to a beautiful place. If you have someone that has hurt you or you won't let go or you won't forgive, uh, and we all have it in some form or another, um, just doing that forgiveness will release so much joy in such a quick fashion. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, lack of forgiveness creates a lot of blockages. Have you done this yourself in your life? Have you had a big kahuna, a big moment where you had to really face the music and forgive somebody? Well, it was me. It was uh, November 2008. Oh, what happened there? Uh, it, was, um, it was me, November 2008. Uh, I lost everything on the stock market in real estate. And really, I, I didn't feel I had a way out, so I, I contemplated suicide. And fortunately, I was invited to an event run by Tony Robbins, and he was able to do an intervention on me. His wife did a couple of interventions, and his wife's uh, brother did a couple of interventions on me. And my wife uh, obviously stepped in and helped me. And I, I was beating myself up, not just emotionally, but physically. I would beat myself up with my fists. I would uh, uh, do all sorts of things because, you know, being a high chief, I wanted to make sure that I did. And so uh, I, the big thing I had to do was to forgive myself. And it wasn't easy because uh, I had 47 years of uh, 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 issues, so to speak. Uh, but at the end, I had to disappear and realize this is my life is not about me. It's about the difference I make. Mm. And that helped me a lot. And I did one thing that helped me, which is to serve. I started helping people. And in the moment you give authentically, all the pain and suffering disappears. So that's How did one you thing. Do that? really... How did you help people? Um, were I you just... doing a volunteer service or how did you show up? Yeah, I, I did some volunteering. I did some free coaching. I helped people, uh, you know, the smallest things, opening doors, uh, picking up uh, pieces of paper off the floor, uh, helping uh, all sorts of societies, the Rotary Club, as a member of the Rotary Club. So we'd have uh, events that we would be holding. And it was amazing. Uh, very pure experience. Wow. So they do an intervention you're really down on your luck. Something turns around and you make a choice. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Your way through and out is a being of service. And if there are people who are listening to you right now and feel like, wow, life is really getting me down and I'm having a lot of challenges, where can they start so they can start getting some relief, some footing or an anchor, if you will? Well, uh, I would start with... Uh something that I did was to give. You know, even giving someone a compliment, thanking a friend, a teacher, a family member, a friend, for something that they did for them, or even saying thank you for being in my life. In that moment you thank them, you disappear, and your focus is on someone else. And when you disappear, your pain disappears. Uh, the second thing I would do is ask them to write down 50 things, 50 things that they're grateful for, and at the beginning, it'll be hard. Uh, and that's, that's one of the issues that they're facing is that they don't, haven't exercised that muscle. So, uh, but, and I, I, I'd also ask them to uh, notice how they feel when they give authentically. Notice how they feel as they write down those different things. Mm. And where do they go from there? So they start serving, start giving, finding ways that they can do this without any attachment. They take the time to write out at least 50 things that they can really feel gratitude and thankfulness mm -hmm. for. And then what, what do they do? Well, just be aware of how they feel. And as they feel better, their energy levels go up and they get more clarity. And something beautiful will happen eventually they'll get to see what they love to do, and then they'll start doing more of what they love to do. But what happens when you're sad or depressed, you stop doing the things you love to do. Dancing, singing, 
uh, whatever it is, artwork, craft work, uh, whatever it is that you love to do, play sports. Oh, that was the other thing I started to do. I started playing tennis again. And uh, that helped me a lot because I was surrounded by friends. And if, if you're playing tennis, you have to keep on the ball. When you're playing on the ball, you have to get thoughts. So you have to do what you love. It's very interesting. I, before I got on radio over 12 years ago, I was a professional actress, singer, and voiceover artist. I did cartoons. And when I got into radio and started writing books and teaching classes about visibility and how to write and how to be interviewed, and suddenly I found that I was at a crossroads. I had to make a choice. I was singing with a jazz band. I was singing with a big band. I had already let go of uh, my acting career at a mindful choice, but now the singing came up. And I thought, well, I there's just not enough of me. So I had to say to my band, I love you, it's been amazing, but this is the path I'm taking right now. And I never thought about it. And in fact, what's very interesting is most people who have come to know me within these past 12 years of podcasting and writing, they don't even know that that exists as it's such a former life for me. They don't even know me as that. They don't know me as an actress. They don't know me as a singer. And lately, when I go to a performance and I see somebody sing, there's a little part of me that just sort of wants to go like, get out of the way, <laughs> give me the mic. Who longs for that feeling again? And I was asked, there's something in Los Angeles called the Greater Good Party an amazing group of people get together with very transformational speakers and it is to create great good at a time when the planet and the people really need it so who they attract is amazing and I would say 12 hours before the function I received a text saying so sorry this is so late I never knew you were a singer but somebody called you out we need someone to sing us in will you you can imagine like my <laughs> years. <laughs> That's a big muscle, right? And I'm like, this is your yes. This is your moment to say yes. Because as you're saying, this is something I love. It was always part of my wheelhouse. Great joy brings great joy. So I said, yeah, I'm doing it. And I figured I'll figure out the song. I don't have a lot of time to put into this, which is actually quite good. So I sang. And now I, I have this feeling, um, I wanted, there's a studio that I know about, and I want to go down there and just, you know, buy it for an hour or two and sing, sing into microphones. And I miss it. And I never knew I'd say that, but it's up right now. It's up for me to do and be again. Okay, so when are you going to do that, boy? Yeah, so I'm leaving town this week to speak on stage. And when I come back, uh, I think the following Friday, I can do it. Okay, so, so not so, this Friday, but a week from. Okay, so uh, 13th, by the 20th. So 20th. Okay, so you agree by the 20th of September that you will have booked one hour studio time. I'm going to do it today. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Now, I'd like to hear a tune. Right now? Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> 10, 10 oh, only, only a meal. Okay. <clears throat> You've got to give a little, take a little, and let your poor heart break a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. Wow. wow. You know, it, it, it changes so many lives with a few tunes. Mm. Well, thank you for asking me. That was a pleasure. I am so curious. You started out, Anil, in 2008. This is a big story, right? You literally virtually hit the wall of self and decide it's not worth it. Fortunately, you go to this experience with Tony Robbins he gets involved, his wife gets involved, his brother-in-law gets involved, your wife gets involved, and ta-da, you choose these new pieces of service, of playing tennis, of finding what you love, and starting to come back to yourself or reinvent yourself out in the world, and then 
fast forward to who you be today. Huge change, who you are, who you work with, and what you deliver. So I, I just have some questions about where you're functioning right now. And the first one, I'm curious if you have healing abilities. Because I know the level which you engage with people. Is that something you don't talk about and you have? Or what is it that allows you to suss people out and help them? You know, uh, in uh, 2000, uh, Tony Robbins said to me, Anil, why don't you coach for a living? And I, I looked at him, I said, what are you talking about? I've got a business. I used to be an eye doctor. Um, but he saw a greatness in me that I didn't see. And when I was an eye doctor, people would ask me for advice, just general advice, and I would tell them, they would come back and say, Anil, that was amazing. And I said, <laughs> of course it was. But the thing is, I, I realized much later on in life that I was a genius. Because what I find so easy that other people find very difficult. Mm. One of my gifts is to allow people to forgive in one or two sessions. Mm. Uh, I, I've, treat, I've, I've helped people who've um, uh, been to therapy for 15, 20 years. In one or two sessions, I release something that's holding them back. Because my, the way I, I help people is to give them that release, to give them the ability to fish. Um, a lot of um, people don't want to be fixed or they, they don't want to fix their clients because it's a continuous revenue stream. But my, my mission is to reach uh, 1 billion, that's 1,000 million people by December 25, 2020. And the only way to do that is to serve. Keep on serving, keep on serving. Uh, and people see that authenticity and it just multiplies. So if you want to reach that many people, you're at Medellin, 10,000 raving fans. What does that feel like, man? I mean, I've spoken to maybe 1,500 is the biggest audience. 10,000. I mean, we're starting to talk stadium, like Roman stadium, right? That's pretty cool. What was that like for you? Uh, actually, it was a bull ring. So it's even worse because you have people <laughs> in front of you. To the side of you to the side of you and behind you mm. and you know one thing i would advise your readers when someone asks you to do something just say yes and then work it out afterwards so i was asked to speak and i said yes afterwards i, I nearly wet my pants because i would never done anything like that and my kid said dad you know whatever you do you know don't wear white pants and don't dance but obviously <laughs> i wore white pants and i danced but at the beginning i was very very nervous then I said to myself, Anil, this isn't about you. Mm. you. You know your stuff. This is about you serving. It's about you helping people. And as, as soon as I disappeared, mm. the ego disappeared. And I just served. Um, and I, I can send you clips. It's the funniest. And it, and it was in Spanish. So there was a, a, a simultaneous translation. So uh, they said I would, I would be on for 90 minutes. And I thought, great, that means 45. Me speaking, they translating. Me speaking, they translating. Then 10 minutes before, they said, no, it's a simultaneous translation. So, again, you, you have to be prepared. If you know your stuff, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. And while you're in a bull ring and you've got people all around, I mean, I know from being an actress, the challenge is there. So were you basically speaking and then moving around and having to address everybody from all angles? That's the only way. You can't ignore the people behind you. But it, it, it was a very engaging type of conversation. And I remember, you know, they were saying something, the entire crowd was saying something. I didn't know what they were saying, and I realized what they were saying. They were saying, Anil, 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 Anil. And that was a magical moment for me. I thought, wow, this is amazing. I'm super psyched to hear that. And you are somebody who has found a way to surround yourself with really influential people. I can imagine knowing you because you are so funny. You're so fun to be with. And I think that's a very attractive quality. And I would imagine that influential people feel the same way. So knowing that about you, how fun and funny you are, what are some ways that we might find that we can learn to surround ourselves with influential people as well? Well, so there, there, there is a way. Um, so 
what I would do first is to remove the toxic people from your life. You know, uh, there are people who drag you down, who take up your energy. You have to remove them. Yeah. And the way I, I managed to, to uh, really meet influential people was to serve. So, for example, I met Mike Tyson. Uh, I, I, I served, I helped his wife. I helped him, but just by serving, but not wanting anything in return. Uh, I met Richard Branson again. The only thing we talk about is uh, health and relationships. I, I never talk business and I never want anything from him. Uh, recently, we were on a, uh, a yacht, my son and I, uh, in Croatia, and halfway through that uh, yacht trip, we got invited to a, a billionaire's yacht, and we spent nine days with him. Mm. And the only thing we were doing was just being ourselves and serving and being playful. You know, we, we had no agenda, and that, that's the thing. Have no agenda, serve, be yourself. And don't worry what other people think of you. If they like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. It doesn't matter. What you're saying is so prevalent. And I don't know if people really understand the importance. So I just want to reiterate that. I am not Richard Branson. However, I've been operating in podcasts for over 12 years. So at some level, there's some recognition when I go to a workshop or an experience. And, uh, or sometimes people don't know who I am. Recently, we were at a vet and my boyfriend decided to tell people who wouldn't have known about me otherwise. And he's just proud, right? So he was so happy to share, oh, Debbie runs Jared and Dream and she's this and she talks to that person and it was so super sweet. And there was somebody there I might have become friends with. She was very interesting. She was very engaging. And what, what was a big turnoff for me is that the moment we had a second together, Without a breath, she turned to me and said, I'd really love to be a guest on your show. How would I get on your show? And it was such an affront. And people would be surprised how much that happens to me. And again, I'm not a Richard Branson, but I can say in my world, if you want to develop a relationship with me, make it with me. And it will probably go far, right? I tend to bring wonderful people into my life. But the moment you want something, need something, it's about work. It's like, oh, you're, you could give me this and that. It's just, it's off. It's not going to yeah. happen. And people know that. And if, if you come from a place with true giving, and find out what you can give. You know, uh, there's always something that you can give that, that someone else would appreciate. Uh, it, it could be making them laugh. It could be telling a story. Uh, but, you know, we never know how we impact other people. People will always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. But let me give you a Richard Branson story. Please. Please. Yeah, we played tennis, and after the match, uh, I asked Richard, would you like a cup of tea? He said, no, Anil, I would give me the pleasure of making you a cup of tea. Wow, you know, you learn so much from people like that, because he was humble. Another thing I learned from him is to wake up early in the morning. So he wakes up at 5 a.m. every morning. And a lot of billionaires, millionaires, high-level execs wake up early, because... When you wake up early, your systems are on fire. You get a download from the universe. It's a different energy. It's a different vibrancy. By eight or nine o'clock, you've done a lot of work, but you have the rest of the day to go ahead with. Again, 5 a.m., a- people. It's 5 a.m. where he is right now, so is, he can do it. Looking like he's on the Spaceship Enterprise, you can too. <laughs> That's amazing. Stephen Kotler, who's a Pulitzer Prize uh, nominated writer and someone I've studied with and has been on the show, he talks about the same thing. He's got insane, what I consider to be insane hours because I tend to sleep in, but he has a whole system for getting mega things done. And um, just in support of what you're saying, Anil, Stephen Kotler is a human performance technology expert. He goes to the best of the best of the best asks them questions, gets together the science, and then he implements it in his life. So if he's waking up early, Richard Branson's waking up early, you're waking up early and getting all this done, there's probably something really important in there for us to pay attention to. Yeah. And remember, if you want to get up early, you can't be going to bed too late. (laughs) What time are you in bed? Well, probably about 11. Ah. I need about, I worked at about, about six hours. 
but because I've traveled so much, uh, the time zones can be a, a little bit disruptive. Mm. Yeah, understandable. Well, that's very cool. Okay, so maybe I'll start setting my alarm a little earlier. I'll, yeah, I'll set it earlier and sing and do something and jump out of bed. And, you know, if, if you're getting up at seven, going from seven to five may be a big jump. So do it in steps, seven to six, thirty to six to five, thirty to five. Um, you know, you don't have to jump in and, and the definition of success is making progress. So if every day you're making progress, mm. you are successful. That's beautiful. Well, this is Dare to Dream. This is an award-winning syndicated podcast. And if you would like to donate to the show, I invite you to do so. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. This show will always be free to you. And for the price of a cup of coffee or more, you can donate to the show and the business admin and all it takes to run this low these many years. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? If you were wanting to live completely bold and free, what does that look like? Well, just know that the people I have on the show, the whole message and reason for the show is to show you the way and give you different points of view that can help you get there. Again, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And again, this is Debbie Dashinger and I'm interviewing Anil Gupta. He is the guru to the gurus. <laughs> and his website is immediatehappiness.com. So Anil, I understand that you know three pathways that get us to happiness and fulfillment. I don't know if that had to do with the three G's, the give, grateful, and grow that we went over, or if there's a diff different formula there. No, it's a simple formula. And, you know, it's a very simple formula, but very practical. And this is, uh, let me give you uh, something else for your uh, viewers. If any time during a day you, you're not feeling happy, all you have to do is look at the formula uh, and find out which is the lowest G. I saw that. <laughs> you saw my dog. <laughs> She's pushing me. She's very pushy. She wants to be a camera. It's like, move over, mama. I thought it was a tail. I thought it was your tail. But no, it's a dog's tail. <laughs> That's hilarious. Shelby, Shelby. Uh, and again, listeners, have fun. You know, laugh at the smallest things. Go, go jump in puddles. Look up in the sky. Look at the clouds go by. You know, it's the simple things that are the big things. That seems to me so profound from somebody who was once thinking about taking his life and then to feel gratitude for so many of the things that, pe that pass people by that they don't even consider anymore. But the fact that you look up in the sky or think even about a rain puddle in that way. Uh, it's the greatest thing if you just look up at the sky like you did as a kid and just watch. And what will happen is your mind gets cleared out. And then you start thinking and beautiful thoughts come in your mind. Mm. You know, what about relationships? I have to say that you have such lovely pictures online of you and your wife, you and your wife, your son and your daughter. I mean, they're really, I can feel your familial love and connection through your pictures together. Yeah. And, and one of the things you do is help people with relationships. And, some of the mistakes that they make. Will you talk a little bit about that so we can maybe have a little bit more of that yummy family love that you have? Yeah, you, you know the greatest mistake people make in marriages? Mm, no. Getting married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good. So the greatest mistake is this. When you first get married, you make each other your number one priority. Mm. You give it the other person a lot of attention. But later on in life, you know, the kids come, you get busy, you stop making your partner your number one priority, you make them, you take them for granted. That's the problem. And then when you take someone for granted and then someone else gives that person some attention, it's really hard to stop what's going to happen next, which is, you know, uh, digressions, infidelity, all sorts of things. So if you make your partner your number one priority, they will never leave you but they also have to make it their important so part of their life. So it's a very simple thing, you know, and the other thing is that 
men want to be respected, women want to be loved. People don't realize that women try and give love to men, but they want respect. Can you explain that? What does that look like? What does respect, how does that show up for a man that's meaningful? Okay, for me, I, I want to be told I, I love you, I honor you, I'm proud of you, well done, good job, and a physical pat on the back, and hugs and kisses, you know, very simple stuff. For a woman, she, she wants to be heard, she wants to be listened to, yep. she wants the man to be present, Yep. and she doesn't want to be fixed. Yep. It's simple. So uh, a really great exercise if you're in a relationship, and you can do this with your partner. If you, if you ask your partner, what can I do to make you feel more respected? Mm. And then he'll say something, what else can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? Then, you know, it's very simple. All you have to do is, is just knock on those doors. And the question he can ask you is, what can I do to make you feel more loved? And if you say, well, if you did this for me, I would feel loved. If you did this for me, I would feel more loved. If you did this for me, you would feel more loved. And then you can ask them, what can I do to make you feel loved? You can ask them, what can I do to make you feel respected? Hmm. So that way, it's very simple because uh, communication is a big issue in relationships. Major. Okay, so is, is that something you feel like on some level you've mastered? Well, there's never so much. Uh, it's, 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 it's always ongoing. Uh, as I change, as my wife changes, as my son changes, my daughter changes. Uh, it, it, it's an ongoing situation. And it should be, because otherwise, if it's not ongoing, you get complacent. What can we do? How can, because I agree with you. When things are good, they can be so good. And there's appreciation, and you really see, oh, I feel so special, this person's with me. But when things start going wonky in a relationship, Somebody starts doing something you don't prefer. And then, you know, even if it's subconscious, there's some retaliation or resentment. Whatever engagement starts to happen, it can really cause things to get off track. So what would be, like, useful suggestions that we can employ that can make a really big difference? And I, I don't know yeah, why yeah. this comes up, but I feel like I have to put in the caveat without feeling like we're selling out a part of ourselves somehow. Yeah, so it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So, for example, many years ago, I, I would leave the toilet seat up and I would leave the, the uh, uh, top of the face tube because, you know, I'm, I'm going to want it back again in the evening. What, why, why spend time putting it back on and again? And it would irritate my wife. And just to get back at her, I would do it deliberately. Uh, you know, and like you say, the retaliatory thing. But one day, this is what she said to me, Anil, whenever you do that, I cannot love you as much as I want to. And I thought about it and said, that's true. You know, if she's upset, no way can she love me. And I thought, wow, that's so, that's such a big thing. So I thought I was just being funny, but no, it goes much, much deeper. It goes so, very deep. I want to speak to your point earlier because one of the key things you said that a woman really desires, and man, this is so big for me, is feel, the feeling of being heard. And that is in conjunction with, please listen, please ask questions, please let me know you're engaged, but please don't feel you have to tell me what to do or have suggestions. It's like the worst, right? So when she's saying to you, I would really love if you'd put down the toilet seat and put the cap and the toothpaste, but you're choosing to turn a blind eye. In fact, a little <laughs> is in there too. It does hurt. It's like, you're not only not hearing me, but you're actually mindfully choosing not to hear me and to still do it. And that, it's amazing what a little thing, right? We're talking about minutia and yet it speaks volumes in a relationship. Yeah, and as human beings, we love to be right. And if we have a feeling that my partner doesn't love me, you will amass so much information and proof proof so uh, a, a thing that you could do with your partner is say hey honey i really felt hurt and i want to thank you and i really respect you for doing that mm -hmm. so you're acknowledging him 
you're thanking him, he feels respected. It's a win-win for both of you. So it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So your wife says to you, Anil, you know, I can't love you as much as I'd really like to love you because of these behaviors. You go away and have an aha moment. And then what happens? Then obviously I, I, I not only put the toilet lid down and put the tube back on, I make sure she knows that I did it. So I, I, I want to be rewarded. <laughs> but I do it with joy, you see? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know what? This is so powerful. And then I start looking for other things that I am doing that would stop her from loving me. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. The small things are the big things. Wow. I just feel like I want to sit in that for a minute. The things that we do mindfully or subconsciously even, but also there's some mindfulness in there that stop our partners. Why the heck do we do that? Stop them from loving us as much as they'd like to love us. Well, because mm -hmm. one, we, human beings, we love to be right, so we'll have mass data. Two, we are meaning-making machines, so we make things mean something. So, for example, if I rang my wife and she didn't return my call, I could make it mean that she didn't love me, she didn't honor me, she didn't respect me. Uh, when all that happened was she didn't call me back. But then I would make a big story around it. But this is the problem. We were never given a manual. And actually, if I could mention my book, it's called Immediate Happiness. Uh, all of this is in my book. It's a manual on how we behave, why we sabotage relationships, why we get upset, how to break down an upset why we have expectations, uh, the way we speak, how to speak. It's very powerful. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. That was big. I'm, I'm marinating right now. Well, folks, a quick, quick break here. This is exclusively for you only. So many of you are entrepreneurs and small business owners. And I know one of the things that is meaningful is for you to have a platform. So people can know you exist and you can get your books, your products, your programs out there. What if you even had a place to create your products, to market your place? What if it did everything? I have an exclusive deal for you, Dare to Dream listeners and viewers only. Three months of a business plan for free. You can shut it down after three months, but it's going to make you money. It's already made me money. I love it. It's Thinkific. It is so brilliant. All the biggest businesses and entrepreneurs are using it right now. It is a powerful all-in-one platform. Very easy to share your knowledge, to grow your audience, frankly, to scale your business. So it gives you easy technology, best support imaginable, and you want to go to get your free months for free. T-H-N-K dot C-C slash Deb. That's T-H-N-K dot C-C slash Deb. Deb, start now for free, and that is an exclusive deal for you only. And Neil, what about people who give too much? What is overgiving about? Well, I mean, there's no such thing as overgiving. The, the, the issue is if you give and you want something back, uh, a, a baby will never overgive. It's constant love, but it doesn't expect anything back. So then I ask yourself, you know, am I giving to get something back? And be honest with yourself. And if it is, that's your problem because it sucks the energy out of you. When you truly give for the sake of giving, it, 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 it replenishes you. You know, look at Mother Teresa. She was always giving. Uh, you know, it's unstoppable. Uh, and then notice how you feel. You'll feel more energized. You'll, you'll feel more joyful. And the other person will receive in a different way because it's coming from a place of authenticity. On a personal note for you, Anil, have you ever had to make a really difficult choice in order to fulfill the path and the life that you're living now? And if so, what was the choice that you had to make? Oh, I've never been asked that question. Um, I had to cut some people out of my life and they were relatives and close relatives. Mm -hmm. But I realized that it, you know, I'm not here because of uh, uh, any blood relationship. I'm here to serve. And letting go of attachment uh, was a big thing for me. Wow. So letting go of some family members. And uh, as soon as I let that go, I got so much joy and freedom because I could be who I wanted to be. Hmm. But, you know, I, 
I urge your, your viewers not to be uh, uh, footballs of other people's opinions. Don't worry what other people think of them. Just do what you think is right and don't worry about other people. It sounds like you're at peace with that decision. It sounds like having done that made a difference and a shift in your life. It, it gave me so much joy because I didn't have to uh, see that the problem with family members is this. There are more rules in a family member than there are with friends. Mm -hmm. So with family members, you have to do certain things in a certain way at a certain time. And that's very painful with friends. You can do anything anyway, anyhow. But yeah. especially in the Indian community, there are so many rules and regulations. Mm. If, I, if I greeted the wrong person out of order, that, that would cause an upset. And, and I can't live like that. Mm. You know, I, I'm doing what I think I should be doing. And I don't want to be thinking, am I doing the right thing? Is it, and I don't want to do that. So I stepped out of that. Now I have freedom to be who I want to be. I love it. Wow. Well, this is Dare to Dream, Debbie Dashinger. I'm speaking with Anil Gupta, who shows you how to lead a richer, fuller, happier, and meaningful life. He wrote the book, Immediate Happiness. Go to his website, immediatehappiness.com. Anil, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? You know, I always... Uh, uh, set up uh, an appointment uh, to meet the Dalai Lama. Very excited about that. And we're working on some projects uh, in India and China because really that's where the big players are and that's where I can make the biggest impact. Um, and it's uh, working on the second book and really serving. And if, if you're the listeners and viewers are interested in finding out how happy they are. Uh, if they want to take the happy test, it's myhappytest.com and they'll get a, a, a score plus detailed breakdown of how they can improve their happy score. What is a practice that you use on a daily basis that helps keep you aligned or grounded? What's your daily ritual or practice? So um, I, I get up. Um, I poop. I brush my teeth. Did I you? What did you just say? You what? Poop. Okay. First, poop, I thought you said cock. Okay. <laughs> Got it. You release. Yeah. So that's the release. It's letting go. And uh, you know, I look in the mirror, and uh, you know, I, I say to myself, uh, "Today's the day." You don't know if you're going to change, you're going to change someone's life. It's not about you, it's about the difference you make. I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm, in, I'm invincible. I'm here to serve, I make a difference. It's my life, I choose how I run it, I choose how I live it. So these are, these are things that people can practice uh, by themselves. And it's, uh, they can write them down, and they can leave it on their mirror, and after a while they can just repeat it for themselves. Because we are who we say we are, we are what we think, we are what we say, we are what we think. So if you change those, Don't I, I hear little footsteps. This is, she thinks she's <laughs> digging to another country, but it is my rug, but it's her in her DNA to dig. So it's hilarious. She's, yeah, she needs her own webcam and her own reality yeah. show. But yeah. I forgive me, I really want to go back to what you said because I really loved hearing. Will you say again, you look at yourself in the mirror and I want to make sure myself for sure and everybody gets what you just said and you say to yourself, today's the day, keep going. What yeah. was the rest so of that? Today's the day. Uh, today's the day. It's my life. I choose how I run it. I choose how I live it. I choose freedom. I choose peace. I choose tranquility. It's not about me. It's about the difference I make. Wow. I make a difference. I change lives. Am I ready? Yes, you're ready.
I may have to quote you on that in one of my classes. That's beautiful. Today's the day. It's my life. I choose how I run it. I choose how I live it. I choose peace. I choose tranquility. It's not about me. It's about the difference I make. I change lives. I'm ready. Anil, thank another you. One. Yeah. Another one you can add at the end is uh, I am free. Uh, uh, I am uh, I am I am free, I am free, I am free. I love me, I love me, I love me. I am free oh, no. three times and I love me three times. Beautiful. Well, Anil, thank you so much for coming in the show and sharing your brilliance yes. on Dare to Dream. Mm, it's been amazing, my friend. And I'm gonna so, end today's uh, show. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I adore you. This is a quote from Anil Gupta. Adversity is your friend. It's not what happens in life, it's who you become. In that moment, you decide, I'm bigger than this. That's when you start to grow. If you'd like to listen to last week's interview on archives or replay, you'll hear Dr. John Demartini. And next up on Dare to Dream radio and podcast, I am featuring Ken Honda, who is Japan's best-selling Zen millionaire. Ken wrote the New York Times best-selling book, Happy Money. You can subscribe to the show from all the podcast sites and also from YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger if you'd like to watch and actually see myself and my guest. That's the most fun. And you can get to see or hear this number one transformation conversation. Thank you for joining us. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place.